Part 1. Course Information. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Hello. I wonder if you could help me. I am interested in enrolling in your MBA programme. Could you give me some information, please? Yes, of course. I'll take a few details first of all, and I'll give you a copy of our prospectus. Oh, that's OK. I already have one here. I've been researching the MBA courses in the local area, so I already have lots of course information. That's great. OK, so first of all, can you tell me your name, please? Yes, of course. It's Anne Horbury. Horbury. Is that H-A-W-B-E-R-R-Y? Yes, that's right. OK. And what's your date of birth, Ms Horbury? The 22nd of May, 1981. That's great. And you were born in the UK? Yes, I was. All right. Can you give me some contact details, please? Sure. My address is 26 Simon Place in Brighton. And my telephone number is 01903 714 721. Sorry, can you tell me your contact number once again? Yes, it's 01903 714 721. OK, great. And do you have a mobile phone number? No, I don't. Is it important? No, that's OK. I'll just write it on your form, no mobile phone. Now, just a few additional questions. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Are you working or studying anywhere else at the moment? Yes, I'm working for Lloyd Enterprise in the city as a secretary and I'm also attending a computer course part-time in the evenings. Great. So can you give me some details about your educational background? We need to make sure that your qualifications match the entry requirements. Yes. I completed a business degree a year ago. I've been working since my graduation, but the job market is very competitive these days, so I'd like to do some postgraduate study now. OK, that sounds fine. Your degree is relevant, and it's good that you have some work experience too. I do need to warn you, though, that our MBA programme is extremely popular and gets full quickly. So would you be interested in applying for any alternative courses if your application is not successful this time? Well, my first choice would, of course, be the MBA. But yes, I've had a good look through your prospectus and I would also be interested in the international marketing course. That's great. It's always a good idea to keep your options open just in case. Finally, can you tell me where you learned about our courses here? Actually, my cousin studied the MBA course two years ago, and she recommended it to me. OK, well, thank you for coming in today. I will pass your details on to our admissions department. They should contact you this week with a formal application form, and they usually invite MBA candidates to come in for an interview. OK, well, thanks for your time. No problem. Good luck with your application. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. 
You will hear a talk about young people living on their own. Listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 12. Listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 12. Loneliness is something we all suffer from in varying degrees, but young people living on their own can be particularly vulnerable. Many who leave the family home find they are less confident and have more difficulty in finding their feet than they expected. Often, going to work or study in another town or city will be the first time they have lived away from home. Although this may sound like an adventure for those dying to get away from the glare of the parental eye, for others it is a daunting prospect which generates apprehension, uncertainty and even fear. In fact, in a recent survey of over 1,600 people who had recently left home, 32% said that understanding and coping with loneliness was a crucial issue for them and made them feel highly stressed and distracted. An annual report by researchers last year recorded a noticeable increase in the number of individuals with homesickness, transition and isolation issues. Acknowledging that feelings of loneliness and isolation could impede progress at work or study, they examined the number of people using the welfare and health services. They found that young people in particular were prone to difficulties. Last year, 61% of all people using counselling services were aged under 30, and of this group, 57% were men. Now listen and answer questions 13 to 20. Leaving home involves a major change in lifestyle, work patterns and degree of independence. You will be away from home, family and friends and are no longer supported by familiar surroundings. For this reason, in the first year a lot of young people suffer from loneliness. Ironically, this sense of isolation comes at a time when you are likely to be surrounded by people most of the time. Living in a busy city, travelling on crowded buses and trains, you will be constantly among people. But this can sometimes compound your sense of being alone. Seeing others who appear at ease among large crowds, mingling and making friends, can make you feel excluded and inadequate. Adapting to a new environment makes people uncertain of what to do or how to behave and breeds insecurities which can make for a real sense of isolation. It is often those who are more used to being on their own who deal best with the transitional period of leaving home. Other reasons for feeling alone include high expectations of the big city where you have the best time of your life and meet lifelong friends it may be the first time you have had to make new friends since you started primary school and perhaps you are reluctant or finding it hard to replace old friends whom you miss. There are also pressures to juggle work and socialising which may leave you feeling left out or it could be that you have a long distance relationship and feel torn between your new lifestyle and that special person who lives so far away. Because loneliness can leave you with a sense of low self-esteem, where you become self-conscious and feel you have been rejected, it is very difficult to overcome. You may be reluctant to even try and make new friends or take part in social activities and will also find it difficult to say no to things, leaving you feeling exploited and weak. One of the ways of combating loneliness is to remember that it's not your fault and that it's something everyone has to deal with, despite appearances. Counsellors advise those feeling lonely to speak to someone they know about their feelings. 
they also ask them to consider joining groups and societies and to get involved in activities which interest them as a way of meeting more people. Of course, overdoing it and jamming your schedule with too many things just to avoid being alone will not work. But meeting others with common interests may be a step forward. If you still feel like you need someone to talk to, you could try group counselling where you will be able to talk to and receive support from a small number of people with the same difficulties as you. For more information, or to be put in touch with an individual counsellor, contact the local town hall support services. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You are going to hear a tape recording of instructions and advice, which a woman called Martha has left for her friend John, who is coming to stay at her house and take care of it while she is away. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Hello John, welcome to the house. I'm really pleased that you can be here to look after my house while I'm away. Here are some things you need to know about the house. Important stuff like when the garbage is collected. In fact, let's start with the garbage, which is collected on Friday. Just write garbage on the calendar on the days they take it away. Put it out on Friday every week, that'll be Friday 22nd, Friday 29th and Friday 5th. It's a really good service. The trucks are quiet and the service is efficient. The bin will be put back outside the house empty. It's a good idea to put it away quickly. This street can be quite windy. I once watched my next door neighbour chase her bin the whole length of the street. Every time she nearly caught up with it, it got away again. The waste paper will be collected this Tuesday. That's Tuesday 19th. There's a plastic box full of paper in the front room. Please put it out on Tuesday. The truck will come during the day. If you don't mind collecting old newspapers and other paper and putting them in the box, I'll put it out when I come home. The paper people only come monthly. I have some things to give to charity in a box in the front room. Would you put it out on Monday the 25th, please? It's a box of old clothes and some bed linen which I've collected plus a few other bits and pieces. Be careful when you pick it up, because it's heavier than you might expect. The charity truck will come by during the day on the last Monday of the month. If you want to use the library, you'll find it on Darling Street. I've left my borrower's card near the telephone. It has a very good local reference section if you want to find out more about this city. I'm sorry to say we don't have a cleaner. Oh yes, filters. Please would you change the filters on the washing machine on the last day of the month, which is Sunday the 31st. We find that the machine works much better if we change the filters regularly. The gas company reads the meter outside the house, so don't worry about that. I think that's all the information about our calendar of events. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. 
Well, John, I'm trying to think what else I should be telling you. As you know, I'm going to a conference in London. I hope to have a little time to look around. It's a great city. I do hope I manage to get to at least some of the theatres and museums. I'm looking forward to all the things I have to do at the conference too. I'm giving a paper on Tuesday the 26th, and there are a couple of really exciting events planned later in the conference program. I hope to meet up with an old teacher of mine at the conference. She taught English literature at my old high school, and we've kept in touch through letters over the years. She teaches now at the University of Durham, and I'm really looking forward to seeing her again. By the way, I expect you're hungry after your trip. I've left a meal in the refrigerator for you. I hope you like cheese and onion pie. Would you do me a favour, please? I haven't had time to cancel an appointment. It was made a long time ago, and I forgot about it until this morning. It's with my dentist for a checkup on Thursday, the twenty-eighth. Could you please call the dentist on eight one six two five two five and cancel the appointment for me? Thanks a lot, John. One last thing: when you leave the house, make sure the windows and doors are shut, and set the burglar alarm. The alarm code number is nine one two zero. Enter. Have fun. I'll see you when I get back. This is your friend Martha saying goodbye. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four section. You will hear an introductory lecture to a course on Southeast Asia. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. My name is Paul Stange. I'm coordinator of this course. It's called Southeast Asian Traditions. I'm also the author of the study guide and the course reader, and you should have those in front of you. As well as these, you'll need two textbooks for the course. There's the one by Osborne, and there's another by Leg. I'll talk a bit more about the reading materials in a moment. Now, if you haven't got these materials, you can buy the textbooks at the university bookshop, and you can collect the study guide and the course reader from me on your way out of the lecture. The purpose of this lecture is simply orientation. What I'm going to do is introduce myself, talk you through the course. And give you some additional advice, apart from what's contained in the study guide, on dealing with the various assignments for the course. First of all, the materials. You'll find the two textbooks very clear, and they give a good basic coverage of the history of the region. Most of the reading materials in the reader are fairly easy going, but I have to warn you that two of them are quite difficult. These are the readings by Smale and Bender, and of these two, the one by Bender is perhaps the more challenging. But don't let that put you off, because understanding these two readings is important to help you develop a clearer understanding of the cultures. In other words, they'll help you acquire greater sensitivity to the differences between the various cultures in the region.
Now, the course itself. The course has multiple aims. It's primarily a history course, but it's not only a history course. It is, in most respects, a cultural history course focusing on Southeast Asia. Nevertheless, the course is, as you'll see from the materials, an introduction to the Southeast Asian Studies component of the Asian Studies program. In looking at the cultural history of Southeast Asia, there are two major influences to be considered: the Chinese and the Indian. It's important not to forget the extensive influence that these two countries have had in the region. China has been trading throughout the region since at least the sixth century, so many of its cultural and social traditions have influenced the countries in the area, and religious practices from India have helped form today's culture. So we'll be looking for the links and the connections between traditional patterns and today's developments in the region. I think you can now begin to see how these past influences might form a background for the present-day social practices, and in the same way, this course will form a basis or background for second and third-year courses, with their focus on the modern period, and in particular the economic and political situation of the region. So that's the outline of the course. I'd like to go on now to look at what you have to do, your assignments, and so on. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.